Hey guys, what is going on? Welcome back to another video here on the channel. In this week's video, we're gonna be taking a look at exactly how old or tired batteries can take longer to charge up. Now, some of you are quite experienced and been charging LiPo batteries for a very long time. And you may have recognized that once a battery pack is starting to get up there in age, let's say around three years of age, that it does take longer to reach 100% state of charge. And you might be wondering why that is. Well, that's exactly what we're going to be diving into in this video. Now, before we dive into that content for today, I did want to share with you one point, and that is that I'm not able to get to all the questions that you guys are asking in the comments section below all the videos. In a case that you have a question that you want me to answer, my recommendation is that you join the Patreon website for as little as $3 per month and help support the RC Explain community. Once you become a patron, you will have access to send me messages through that chat, and I will make certain that I answer each and every one. Let's kick this video off by first going through a review of what we learned in the last week's video. Last week, we talked about LiPo battery packs and how they use a constant current slash constant voltage method in order to end up getting up to that full state of charge. Essentially what we need to know about that constant current slash constant voltage is the way that it is working for us. We start the charge by initiating it. We get a specific current. Let's say this current is about five amps. And as we are delivering five amps through our charger to that battery pack, we are increasing the amount of voltage that our battery pack is at. For example, it starts off at a relatively low voltage and by the time it hits this point here, it is at the maximum voltage that that battery can accept. Any further and it would be simply unsafe for that battery pack. In that case, the charger recognizes this and it starts to ramp the current down. And this is what you see. We enter the phase that is known as the constant voltage phase right here at the top where we see that green line and our current is ramping down to zero. Once it hits about that zero current mark, then the charger is going to terminate the charge. And essentially that means that our battery is at 100% state of charge, which is exactly why we put it on the charger in the first place. So that in a nutshell is exactly how the constant current slash constant voltage method there works. Now the next thing that we need to look at is internal resistance. Older or tired LiPo battery packs do have higher internal resistances just by the nature of how we use them and how they degrade over time. What this does mean to us is it affects both discharging as well as charging, which is what we're talking about today. Now let's go through an example to see how that actually is affecting our discharge. So discharging our battery packs is essentially the same as saying that we're running our radio control vehicles. As we run our vehicles, we are pulling power out of that battery pack and slowly discharging it or quickly discharging it over time. Here we have a graph that has voltage on the y-axis on the left-hand side and current on the y-axis on the right-hand side. And as we can see, we start off with a voltage here marked by our green line on the graph. And you can see that it starts off relatively high and our current is relatively low. And as we increase the amount of current, our voltage comes down. And the first point that we have here is we see a voltage drop. When we're drawing very little amounts of current, we have high voltage, however, driving more current, and we have less voltage. And the overall difference between those two points is the drop of voltage that we are seeing as a result. And then as we back off, the voltage starts to go up because we're reducing the load for that battery pack and the same pattern sort of repeats itself when you draw more current again. So the big point here is that we are seeing a voltage drop occur over the battery pack in such a way that we're gonna get less voltage to the motor when we're demanding a higher amount of current. The same thing happens and applies when we're actually charging our batteries, except it's gonna be the inverse. Instead of the battery going down in voltage because we're pulling from it, we are pushing power to the battery pack. In that case, our voltage is actually gonna go up opposite direction of what we're seeing here. We're gonna see this on the next graph that we have right here. So I have two specific graphs on the top, this is our brand new battery that we ended up buying, it's brand new, and we roughly show the characteristics as we charge it, and then we'll start talking about our older battery pack as this is now three years old and what happens here. So essentially we go and start the same process. Here I kind of identify what happens when we initiate our charge. 
So we start off at that low state of charge where our voltage is as low as it is throughout the entire cycle of the charge. We initiate the charge right here before the vertical blue line uh, starts. That vertical blue line is the current here on the right hand axis jumping up to that same 5 amps or whatever we are setting our chargers to. In this case we do see a jump of voltage happening on our battery as it begins to charge. That's identified by that small little jump of voltage there in red. Then throughout the rest of the charge, we maintain our constant current. And as we are at constant current, we are starting to see the voltage ramp all the way up until it hits that maximum saturation point right at 4.2 volts here. And it's fully saturated at that voltage. It cannot accept a higher voltage. So what must happen is the current begins to ramp down. Now, as we are at that 4.2, to max voltage of an RC LiPo battery pack, we begin ramping our current down because we are in that constant voltage phase of our charging cycle. At this case, we end up terminating the charge at the very bottom here when current essentially becomes zero. Some chargers have a specific formula that they're able to go and use in order to establish that termination of charge point. Now on the bottom, we have a completely different example here, and this is going to cost us all kinds of time, and we'll see exactly why that is. So essentially what happens here, we have the same point, we're gonna go and plug the battery in, and then this is when we plug it in, there's some time that goes by until we're able to reach the charger and initiate that charge. Once we do initiate that charge, current jumps up to that same five amps or whatever we're charging our battery pack at, and our voltage then jumps up as well. This time though, it is not the same jump that we experience in the graph above. We see a much larger jump of voltage, and this is because of that voltage drop that we were talking about and we saw when we go and discharge our battery pack. After that voltage jump, we're gonna have the same relationship playing out where we have constant current happening. And as we have this constant current phase of our charging cycle, our voltage is ramping up until it sees that maximum voltage, which is going to be the 4.20 volts for a typical RC LiPo battery. This time it comes at the point here where it reaches that 4.20 volts much earlier. In which case we know that once we have completed our constant current cycle, we enter that constant voltage phase of our charging cycle which means that our current is gonna to begin to decrease over time. This is where we're going to lose out on time. We're no longer charging at the maximum rate that we can because our battery already hit that 4.2 volts and we're going to be charging our battery pack at a slower and slower and slower rate until finally it reaches the termination point, which means our battery pack is fully charged. Now this ultimately depends on the condition of your battery when it is old or tired. A more tired battery pack will experience an even longer time to charge up. It also depends on the typical charging rates that you would have. If you're charging at 1C, you may not see as big of an impact if you were always charging it at 2C if your battery allowed or higher, for example. So there you can see exactly how old tired batteries can take longer to charge simply because they hit that maximum voltage and we have to wait a longer time because of that ramping down cycle when we enter that constant voltage phase of our charge cycle. Well guys, that pretty well sums it up for this video. I hope you were able to take something away from what we covered in this specific video. As always, like the video if you do. Don't forget to hit that sub button so that I can see you in the next video. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next one.